By far one of the most requested build ideas in my comments over the last few months has been for me to build one of these, an Acrano Plan. Now for new subscribers out there, I have actually built an Acrano Plan ground effect vehicle before. It was powered by thrust vectoring forward motors and an EDF on the tail for good measure. As I've had to put many of my recent projects on hold at the moment, such as my jet tip helicopter, I thought that this would be the ideal time to show you how to make one of these, your own micro RC Acrano Plan with simple materials and electronics. The previous the crown plan I built taught me a lot about the fine margins of getting into ground effect. You needed a lot of power to get off the ground, but then had to back off the throttle to ensure that you didn't end up taking off and flying along like an aeroplane, which is what I did <laughs> a few times. I hadn't really ironed out all of that previous Acrano Plan's problems before I took it out on a lake to see if I could recreate the Caspian Sea Monster, uh, which, yes, ended up with a bit of an underwhelming splash in the end. Although not strictly a tutorial, this video is going to be half me messing around as usual and half me sort of showing you how to put one of these together yourself at home. Right, let's have a look at my first attempt to build an Acrano Plan ground effect vehicle on a very small scale. I decided to use balsa wood for my first go at building a micro-sized Acrano Plan to keep the aircraft's weight down. To trap lots of air under the wings, I needed to angle them fairly severely and keep the gap to the ground to a minimum to increase the effectiveness of the ground effect. These wing fences at the side prevent air from spilling out from under the wing to also help increase the effect. This works just like the real life Acrano Plan, which shoved air under its wings as it moved along. You can think of ground effect vehicles as almost like hovercraft, but unlike hovercraft they use airspeed to create a bubble or cushion of high pressure air. I find it fascinating that it's possible for huge Acrano Plans to take advantage of this aerodynamic phenomenon, lifting a giant machine off the ground with small stubby wings. It's quite impressive what ground effect can help you to do. The Acrano Plans, after all, hold the record for the largest payload ever lifted by an aircraft. It's because of this I'm surprised that not many people have actually heard about them. It's probably partially down to the fact that Soviet Akrana plans were pretty hidden from the Western world in their heyday, but even so it seems odd that not more people are aware of these mighty machines today. Before going on further with the build, I decided that I should do some research to see just how unknown these things are, even in their native homeland, by asking a Russian. Hey, Jana, how are you? Good, thank you. How are you? Yes, very well, thank you. Do you know what an Acrano plan is? Acrano plan? Yeah, Acrano plan. Mm. Yes, no one knows what an Acrano plan is. <laughs> So, enthused by the realisation that Acrano plans clearly need a bit more attention on the internet, I cracked on with the tail surfaces and the other final parts of the airframe. I made the nose removable so that I could have easy access to the electronics and battery later on. This Acrano plan was designed to use a single motor mounted high up on the tail nacelle. Okay, the airframe's done, now I just need to add the motor, the servo's in the back. The battery, I'm thinking, is going to go in the nose. I'm pleased to find out that the wing is pretty much bang on the centre of gravity at the moment. Um, that might change a bit with the electronics. Test one. Although initially it seemed that the wing was hardly lifting at all, these quick chuck tests seemed to demonstrate that even when sliding quickly at zero rotation, air trapped beneath the wing would lighten the weight and decrease the drag between the craft and the ground quite significantly. As I still had to add electronics, it did seem that the airframe was already too heavy and would have to travel very quickly indeed to leave the ground using only those small wings. I think I'm gonna just tape some little tabs or flaps or whatever you want to call them. I definitely think we're losing a lot of efficiency with this gap here. Some beautiful flaps have just been added to this craft. I went ahead and added the electronics anyway to see if the extra control would help me to pitch the nose up and increase the lift of the wing when travelling along. At such a small scale, being light is key, but I thought I'd have a go at trying to make this airframe work. Well, it certainly slides very well. 
We've just come out the front door, got a bit more room to test it. I set up the Ekrana plant with a forward CG to minimise the strong force of the motor trying to rotate the aircraft around its centre of gravity, and tried a few test runs up and down the only flat bit of concrete I could find outside. As test facilities go, this one left a little to be desired. <laughs> Demonstrated by the hovercraft-like power slides of the Ekranoplan when moving forward, you can see that we were able to get the thing riding along some high pressure to a small extent. However, after this test I ended up rebuilding the tail and removing the motor and power system, and instead going for a much lighter setup overall. Before this though, I thought I would spruce up the colour a little in the hope that red might make it go a bit quicker. The power system I used featured twin differential thrust one cell brushed motors and this whole setup was about six times lighter than the previous two cell setup. Again you can see the potential but in the end I decided that the over engineered balsa airframe was simply too heavy and I might find more success in building a Mark II by starting over again. Crashing the thing off the table also helped me come to the same conclusion. It was at this point that I had another idea. Perhaps sparked by the hovercraft-like performance of the previous design, I remembered that I had one of these, a tiny Woof micro hovercraft made by Badass Drones. This machine has four motors and is controlled by a small drone flight controller pre-programmed to use differential thrust for steering. As I thought it might be handy to double the thrust as well as halving the weight, I dismantled it and got to work on a new super simple foam board airframe structure. Immediately with this new design, I found that even at slower speeds, the four props could blast lots of air beneath the wing to lift it and reduce drag. At higher speeds, the Ekranoplan could move extremely smoothly, touching the surface at only a few small contact points. You could blast the throttle and then bring it all the way back to idle, and the thing would just keep on moving. The artificially high airspeed from the motors keeping the lift and weight almost equal. But alas, not quite there. Although not perfect, you can see from this slowed down footage that the lowest parts of the vehicle, the wing fences, do leave the ground for extended periods of time, which was promising. With a lighter airframe still, there's little doubt in my mind that you could perfect this micro RC ground effect vehicle into a seriously effective little machine. If you have a go at making one, just try not to let it get away from you. So yes, the, uh, the Mark II was definitely better than the first one, and I think it comes down to that lift to weight to, uh, to thrust uh, and airspeed velocity uh, equation or ratio or relationship, you know, similar wing area, but it could, uh, it didn't have as much to lift off the ground. So, yes, pretty basic aerospace engineering stuff, but this just goes to show the Crano plans are no different to other aircraft in that regard. I really would encourage anyone out there to start building their own weird experimental projects with these electronics and materials that you can get very cheaply and affordably these days. If you'd like to help support my work then you can through Patreon and you can help me make bigger and better projects a reality. On that note please don't hesitate to give me your suggestions of uh, grand projects that I can be building in the comments down below. Just please don't ask for another crown of plan. <laughs> I listened to you, I've made three now, um, maybe we should leave ground effect vehicles for a while. Thanks very much for watching this video. If you did like it, then please click the like button, subscribe if you're not already, and click the notification bell um, to become part of the notification squadron, which is something I've just thought of, and I think it has a nice ring to it. I'm going to get started on the next project. See you on the next one. Thank you.